I think we can uh, get us started. Uh, thank you so much for attending. It's an honor for me to welcome you to day one of the OSPO contract. We have great panelists, great speakers uh, for this next this day and, 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 and tomorrow. So I hope you learn a lot. Um, I'm pleased to announce some of the to-do community updates. Um, but first, introduce myself. I'm Ana Jimenez Santa Maria, and I'm a senior project manager at the Linux Foundation. And I'm working uh, in serving the Chudu Group, and now also the Devrel Foundation as a project manager there, and trying to grow the community and and get things together. Um, so, I hear I, I I will assume that many of you knows to the group as the community of OSPOS. Um, but I, I also want to deep dive more into why uh, this community uh, is really focused on OSPOS. The mission of the Tutor group is try to bring open source talent in organizations uh, able to serve the value of uh, open source strategy and, and use this adoption of a strategic open source and uh, put talent for open source management. Um, because I, maybe you have heard this story, like the engineering loves open source, but maybe the rest of business units and the rest of uh, teams in the organization doesn't really get it. So how to put this strategic importance of open source uh, different companies uh, can can have different uh, can see different benefits or, or, or different um, goals of why getting this strategic importance. For instance, commoditized market, reduce cost, uh, try to um, uh, reduce friction, partner with other uh, organizations in the same industries, build industry standards accelerate innovation, accelerate development. There are many different goals, drivers of motivations because no OSPOs are the same, because no organizations are the same. Uh, so when an organization decides to be committed, put talent, able to navigate in these open source dynamics, uh, they, they understand that it's a multifaceted um, scope. It's not just like, okay, I hire an open source uh, manager and he will or she will or they will take care of uh, how to operate and how to save my organization and digital transformation for my organization. Well, it is that, but also you need to engage with the community, know how to build partnerships. Uh, also build educations around contributions upstream, why it's important, how do you adapt it to the internal company or organization's policies and processes, how, to, how do you enable this company uh, also in terms of all the compliance and when you are using software, your organization is using software, what are the best practices and the uh, directions uh, for these organizations to operate. And here, when thinking about all this complex X system, is when you think about OSPOS as a vehicle, but it's just that as a vehicle to help uh, onboard and help the organizations uh, to navigate more efficiently, to allocate talent, investment, and uh, manage uh, these open source uh, activities and tasks. And why OSPOS? Well, uh, in the past year, uh, some of these OSPOS have a proven impact, direct impact on how on different ways they have been provided value to the organization. Uh, for instance, this comes from the last uh, survey uh, and how OSPOS are working. They, they are not just open source specialists, but they also collaborate closely with other business units and teams like security to advocate or to provide advice on security practices in terms of open source. They also have provided value of software development best practices. In the last survey, we saw, we saw that 96% of organizations that said they had an OSPO, they uh, saw significant changes in these software development best practices inside the organization. 
Um, and saying that, um, I also wanted to do the first announcement of this keynote that as OSPOs are really focused on educating this developer, educating engineering teams and the business units across the organization, uh, in this community, they are right now in the process uh, of working a certified open source developer for enterprise context. Uh, right now, there are dozens of subject matter experts across different organizations across the world working with Linux Foundation uh, training and certification, now education, it has been renamed, uh, to, to build this certification exam that will be soon completed, hopefully for uh, early next year or late this year. Um, another thing on the impact of OSPOS are about upstreaming code, uh, sharing the why is needed to do upstream code and not only using open source software. It has a lot of benefits, but this has been also been need to be translated into organization strategy and business value. Uh, and there are also some evidence of organizations with OSPOS uh, saying that they have more, nearly four more times likely to provide upstream contributions versus those who doesn't know this open source talent in, in these entities. Um, these were from the 2023 results. So I want to do also a call out uh, that uh, we have been now working on the 2024 and today, uh, the preliminary data of this OSPO survey are already in our GitHub repo. So for those who are aware of this, uh, uh, the um, OSPO survey uh, repo, here there is where we uh, add all the raw data from past surveys. We have been conducting this OSPO survey since 2018. So all the questionnaires, raw data, key findings, uh, sample size, everything is there. So you can now also find the preliminary findings and hopefully the full report will be also launched by uh, late this year. And we will be also announcing there. And um, okay, so we have been, I, I have been sharing with you some of the, how, how some um, OSPOs across the world are making impact in their organizations, but it's not that easy, right? Like, Tutu Group wouldn't exist if things were easy. Uh, and advancing this strategy in open source needs also to advance in the OSPO strategy, right? Like, the, the, this talent inside the organization, how do they grow? How, where do they uh, partner with? And, and it takes a village. And every organization um, might be prioritized certain things in terms of, okay, what, how, how many effort does the organization want to provide here, the amount of time, the maturity level of that organization in terms of open source understanding, uh, and even the industry they are in. So it takes a village, it's step by step, some might go faster, some might go slower, slower and it is not bad being slow and, and, and is, is, is stepping in what matters most to the company at this point. Uh, but because of that, these are challenges. Uh, in Tudu, we also uh, have a, a huge uh, in, uh, status on, uh, in this, on building use cases and having OSPOs sharing their best practices and in the open. And these are some of the industry OSPOs sharing uh, in the open this, their, their journey. For instance, SIP, they have um, this uh, open source manifesto that comes from all the open source manifestos for all the OSPOs in Europe as well. And it's great to see like how they are uh, adopting these manifestos to put evidence and commitment on open source. Uh, recently, Toyota announced also their open source program office and how they are collaborating with uh, open source communities uh, and, their and how is strategy importance for their organization. Uh, Porsche as well, they recently shared their use case on, and they have these open source web pages. Uh, where they share their missions, their values in open source and, and the strategic importance for the organization too. 
uh, and or Sony, for instance, and how they structure uh, this OSPO across the different la layers, right? Like it's not just the OSPO uh, talking with other open source people, but also driving this education, communicating across teams. Uh, so this last use case is in fact comes from uh, a project in Tudor that is called the OSPO book. Uh, and uh, today also we wanted to announce uh, m some contributions, upcoming contributions coming uh, from uh, also OSPO use cases from Chinese company by China Academy of Information and Communications Technology. Uh, so you might have seen that there was another person with me uh, that it was uh, Chan Yang, but unfortunately uh, he couldn't get the visa. So that's why I wanted to uh, welcome a stage to Richard that is going to be sharing more details uh, about these OSPO use cases and collaboration with Tudu. Thank you so much, Anna. Since we have very limited time, this is a very quick introduction to CICT. Um, it's actually one of our, um, I would say, very important partners for. Uh, oh, by the way, I'm Richard from uh, Ant Group OSPO. So some of you might see me yesterday, uh, and I have stickers over there. Um, yeah, so for CICT, is, um, they've been doing a lot of research uh, together with To Do Group, and uh, they're also kind of acting as, uh, I would say, uh, evangelist for both of um, open source as well as OSPO in China. Um, and they actually did a case study. Um, I think this is already the third year. Um, they did like two case studies. Um, for the first case study, actually featured uh, Ant open source as well as ByteDance open source. We have William there somewhere. William? Yeah. Um, in fact, I mean, like um, building an OSPO in China is pretty challenging, I have to say. Um, if you want to know, know more, we have like another session tomorrow, 11, in this room. We'll be discussing about some of those kind of, I would say, divergence, convergence challenges of building this in, uh, uh, I would say, like Asian settings. Yeah, like uh, moving forward, um, there are actually a lot of work planned by CICT. Um, some of those are being called out like OSPO standards reports and more case studies and industry conferences. Um, we kind of realize that, you know, like, um, since building OSPO is hard, and we can already work on hard things by ourselves, and that's not the spirit of open source. Um, so attending events like this and working with to-do group with Anna is part of our plan to pretty much smooth that process and make everything easier. So uh, I mean, that means if you are an OSPO practitioner, or if you are working very closely with uh, you know, the Asian communities, please reach out and we'll be our, uh, be our guest and we'd like to discuss more about it. Thanks so much, Anna. Thank you. And since we don't have more time, I'm going to be really quick. I'm sorry. Uh, but I just wanted to end up with uh, this year is to do 10th anniversary and we have announced a teaser video. And I wanted just to serve with you here today. And with that, I will end up this keynote. Thank you so much. Open source is all around Bluebird. TikTok is a big user of open source software. How do we streamline the processes? OSPO is a very strategic move. We decided to make OSPO to accelerate our software development. We all like advisors or counselors to the management. Took a major step into that space of vulnerability remediation. Really help our developers across the company. We accelerate open source, giving people the information as quickly as possible. Try to act as the gateway to connect internal developers with the open source communities outside. The To Do Group was a very special idea. Companies struggled with how to do open source. The wealth of information that the To Do Group has been able to document is so useful. It offers a platform where we as Porsche can collaborate and contribute across industries. Kind of along our journey of strategically using open source software. We also use RepoLinter. It gives us those different case studies of different companies across the world. And there is a recognition that everybody is also safe to share. People who aren't exposed to open source also need to learn a lot of the basics and best practices too. You're seeing all of these different enterprises coming together for one common goal. They're trying to be responsible about using and contributing to and releasing open source. And so I contribute back because I get so much contribution from them. Ten years now. It's really amazing to see a lot of new folks sharing what they think are good open source practices. And it has been one of the most rewarding experiences in the past five years that I've been doing this. Join the to-do group. It's so great. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much.